Okay, so we've seen how to determine, um, or actually we've seen what the definition is of a frequency um, or a probability distribution, right? We've seen what a probability distribution looks like. The probabilities for a random event, right? That list of possible values that this random event could take um, is shown here. The list of possible or the list of the probabilities associated with each of the one of those random events. So the probability of having two girls was 0.299. Probability of having three girls out of five was 0.324. Um, and the sum over all of those probabilities has to be 100 for this to be a proper probability distribution. So in order for us to think about this, I'm going to um, use a simple list of values. Right? We saw earlier that, um, that it is possible to determine an arithmetic mean, an average. And we could do this from a frequency table. Um, so let's say that we have a list and it looks like So we have a list of values and the list of values, let's say it's a three, a three, a four, a four, and another four, a five, a six, six, seven, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten different values that are here. And there are at least, well, there are two ways we can get the mean um, of this, this set of values. The simplest way would just be to add them up. Three plus three plus four plus four and then all the way through here and divided by the total number of values and if you did that you'd see that the value is um, those values sum up to 49 and so you end up with 4.9 How could we get this using a frequency table? How could we get this average using a frequency table? Um, the way this frequency table is going to be set up is if we know those values, 3, 4, 5, and if we list them all, 3, 4, 5, um, 6, 7, frequency associated with each one of those values. So the 3 came up um, twice. We can count it and we'd see it there twice. And the 4 came up three times. The 5 appears once. And the 6 appears twice. And the 7 appears twice. So let's do what we just did here. But we'll just do it in a more concise way. So we had um, we had a, a three, but instead of writing it two times, I'm just going to show its frequency. And so that three appeared two times. And then I also had a four, and he appeared some number of times. 
a 5 that appeared some number of times, a 6, and a 7. And so for each one of those, we know what their frequency was, 1, 2, and 2. Um, and we then would divide this by the total number of values. And that total number of values is, of course, still our 10. So notice that our 6 and our 12 is, of course, going to be consistent with what we've seen in our, in our list previously. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 3 is 12. And if you do the math here, of course, you'll end up with 49 over 10 again, or 4.9. So if you put this into a table where you have list 1 and list 2, um, you can use your calculator to um, calculate, or actually to do this calculation here, where it multiplies 3 times the 2, the 4 times the 3, the 5 times the 1, and then sums them up. So that's, in fact, what 1 var statistics will do, 1 var stats. And what you want to do is put in the list of values for the first one and then the frequency, because it will multiply um, the frequency. Um, uh, by the, um, the variable list1. So every time we, um, as it goes down here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different items, it will do a one-to-one -one matchup based on the index or the position. So if you plug in one bar stats into your calculator, you will once again get 4.9. Um, so another way to look at this is uh, I'm going to take this 3 that we had here and we multiplied that 3 by a value. Four, the five, the six, the seven, and certainly nothing changes here. We want to end up with the same value, but let's factor out the one tenth, or the, um, let's factor out the denominator. Right? Now, all of these have a common denominator, so we could bring them back in and add them up. So the only thing we've done is um, not broken any rules of algebra. We've just factored out um, the denominator. And then I'll take this one more step. Notice that we have a 3. And it's being multiplied by two tenths. That these are equivalent, right? As is the four that we see there. The four is multiplied by three tenths. The five is multiplied by one tenth. So let's just put those values in, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then the 4 is multiplied by 3 tenths, 1 tenth, 2 tenths, and 2 tenths. Um, so the 
three, four, five, six, and seven that we see here. Each one of those are multiplied by um, by a value, and the two tenths ultimately is the percentage and the proportion of twos. Um, oh, but I'm sorry, the proportion of threes that can be found. How many threes? in the 10 different values that we have here. How many 3's do we have? 2 out of the 10. How many 4's do we have? F um, 3 out of the 10. So what we've done here is we've taken each one of these values and multiplied them by their frequencies. So one way to state this um, is that we have x sub i, uh, let's, we have the first x value, the 3, multiplied by his frequency, plus the second value times his frequency, plus the third value times his frequency, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, however many values there are, this one happens to be 5, I'll just say in general in some n terms. Um, and then we're going to um, divide them by the total count. So it would be the 2 plus the 3 plus the 1. Those are the frequencies. So let's say it's the summation of those frequencies. And that would give us the mean those values. Um, so each one of those values, the 3, the 4, and the 5, were multiplied by the, um, the fraction um, that it made out of the entire set. So now let's think about this. If I have cards that have numbers on them, the cards may have 3s, 4s, five, six, and seven, I can say that the probability of selecting a three is two tenths. The probability probability of selecting a card with a four on it is three tenths. The probability of selecting a card with a five on it is one tenth. So the other way of thinking about this is that this is really if we if we turn it into the language of random events, then what we're really looking at then is the three, four, five. We don't know which one of those we're going to select. So each one of those is a random event. And then we're multiplying each one of them by the probability of that random event occurring. So the equivalent to what we see up there is x1 times the probability or the, pro or the proportion. Um, of that one, x1 being 3, x2, which is the 4, times the proportion of those values, or the probability, and so forth. So the general way we would make that statement is that um, we want to do a sum over the entire set. And that's going to give us a type of average. <clears throat> so let's, let's see if we can correct that and pull this down a little bit. So that's going to give us a type of average. Um, so this right here. Three occurs two tenths of the time. Three occurs with some probability and some proportion. In this case, it was exact. It occurred exactly two out of ten times. Um, and so we truly got the mean. But if three is really um, associated with some probability, I'll say 1, 3, and if 4 is associated with some probability, um, what was
times that 3 tenths, so I'll say 8 and so forth. Um, so now what we're getting when we're actually working with the probabilities, it's an average of sorts, but it's the proportion, it's still um, the value times the proportion. So it's an expected value more so than an average. Um, and that expected value of that random variable, um, we use this notation here. And so there's a very strange, certainly for most of you it will be new, expected, and it's not that that I'll use, I'll use these brackets here. The expected value of a random variable can be determined by doing what we've done here. So it's really a type of average. This is the expected value. random variable x. Alright, so that's how we can get an average and our expected value. Next, what we'll do is um, use other frequency distributions, right? We'll use a random variable and the probability of that random variable occurring to determine what the expected or average value would be for different probability distributions.